Here's an example of uh, setting the tool height or the tool diameter. What we're going to have is tool one is a drill, tool two happens to be an end mill. Typical scenario. So here what we do is we go to UT for utilities. It's going to bring up a screen here. We have options. Tool setting cycle, fixture setting cycle, and a whole lot of things that we don't normally use. But for this demonstration, tool setting cycle is what we're going to do. So we hit number one, enter. And it's going to ask us what the starting tool number. Well, we're going to start with tool number one, enter. And then our ending tool, because we can do one through 16 or one through four, depending on how many tools we need for a particular job. But here we've got two tools, so we're going to say ending tool number is two. Okay, we're going to, we can jog to position, probe left mount, probe right mount. We're not going to bother with those. That has to do with probes. We don't care. What we're going to do is we're going to go number one for jog to position. Now it asks us to enter a gauge block height. And here's what I do. The top of the part, which is going to be Z0 for our programming, I'm going to touch the tools off using a piece of paper, and you'll see that demonstrated. I measure this, it's 4,000 thick. For a little safety, I always say it's 3,000. So gauge block height is 0 0.003. So that's going to be a change. It's going to adjust for that to come to the actual top of the part. Tool diameter. Well, tool diameter is a drill. We don't care about that. So it doesn't matter. It's not going to use that figure. We're not going to G3 or G2. But locate length. So number two, we're going to locate length, and it says press jog and move to the height block gauge or press bangle to exit. So we're going to hit jog. Okay? Now, we've got X, Y, Z, and A if we had the rotary table on it, which we're not going to bother with. We have a ten thousandths per click, a thousandths or a tenth. We're going to put it on 10 thousandths per click. Set up like we have it here. Okay, so I brought the, with the, uh, it, okay, what I've done is I've put this on Z, Y, and X, and I've just basically moved this around until the center of the drill is basically right where I want. On the top of the part, very close, a little bit of space without it hidden. Now I'm going to change it to 1 thousandths per click. Put paper underneath it, and one click at a time while I move this until it just touches right there. Now what I'm going to do is come over here on the computer, on the screen, and it's going to sit manual. When I hit manual, it's now recorded that Z minus depth at its, as its part zero. When I press start, it loads that in, comes up, Automatically does a tool change, gets ready for the Z height offset for tool number two. Okay, back to the screen. It's going to ask me the same thing, tool number two. It knows that. It knows its last diameter offset, which is 0.37, and its last length. We're going to enter a new one. So enter a new, new tool diameter. Tool diameter for number two is going to be a 0.375. It's a 3 8 end mill. Now it's going to ask me to enter the length. Number two, press jog. I'm now in the jog mode. I'm going to come over here in the 10 thousandths per click. Move it from Z, Y, and X until it lines back up. Let me move my paper. Bring it down. Until it's just about to hit. A little bit of a space. Turn it over to one thousandths per click so it's gentle. Slide my paper in here. Slide back and forth. So it just hits. Okay, there it is. Now, if I hit manual, it's automatically going to come up on the second tool. You have to hit start to bring it up on the first. All other tools will automatically come up as soon as you hit manual. And again, manual sets that Z height for that tool in the tool data sheet. Okay, so now we have a simple operation where we would typically drill a hole and then go ahead and mill bore out a pocket, which is what this part done. So, we're not going to do that, but that's how you do tool setting offsets. So it's going to ask you if you want to put in a, a diameter or a tool height. For a drill, it's, you don't care about the drill size. You've already predetermined that. The computer does not need to know that in the tool data. But for end mills, countersinks, if you're going to mill countersink, 
thread mill, that sort of thing, it needs to know its diameter. And then the data sheet is where you actually change the tool diameter to change the pocket size. I call it lying to the machine, but it's what it, it takes to move a hole bigger or smaller. So there you have it for that. Okay, here's where we go to the tool data sheet if we need to change the radius to change the pocket size, tool height if you want to change the tool depth. It's all stored in the tool data. So where we go is DT for display tools. Enter at the command. Prompt, enter. And here's a list of the tools that you can run in. There's more than 16 numbers because you can actually call up different H numbers for tool height. If you want to adjust the programs separately from one program to the other, you'll learn about that. But primarily, you're going to use 1 through 16. That's generally what I have. So here you have tool number 1. It's a .370 with the length of a Z minus from the starting position, which is Z0 for the machine. It goes down 9.166, and that's the top of the part. Tool 2, we told it to go to a .375 as the diameter, and that will be done in the, you know, in the tool setting cycle with minus 11. We can change that. If that 375 has a little bit of tool flex to it, and you want to make the pocket a couple thousands over, you can either change it to a new value, so you can go, as an example, a uh, new value for number 1, 1 enter, and it's 0.375, we can call it a 0.372 if we want. Then it asks you for the length, we're not going to change the length, and we're going to accept it. Okay? So that's how you change heights and diameters. Now, if we go back to display fixture, 